Okay, we're here for the last part of part four of chapter three in planetary geology at Wayland Baptist University. I'm David Carr. Um, hi. Um, how you doing? I miss not seeing you in class, by the way. I much prefer the class face-to-face -face lecturing. But this is a good alternative, and it makes it more convenient for you. So without any further ado, I'm going to go to chapter 3. Point, I'm sorry, section 3.4 of my lectures, which is slide 62. And we'll move on. It's, uh, we're almost done with chapter 3. So the nature of science. So I've, I just gave you a quick brief history of how we made great, you know, we've come many, many years through history and in developing this idea of scientific thinking, observations, conclusions, trial and error. So in the nature of science, we can distinguish science from non-science. Let me give you an example. The World Series, uh, the best team, let me just put it this way, the best baseball team ever is the New York Yanker, Yankees. Is that science or is that non-science? That's non-science. There's no way I can prove that. Well, maybe I could if I established parameters. What do I mean by the best team ever? So I establish, uh, well, that means the greatest wins, the most wins, or the ones that won the World Series most over a certain period of time. Then that could make it science. But another one would be like, the house burnt down because uh, Tim was sad. Yeah, that's not in science. All right. So... Science would be, my dog died because it had a heart attack. Now, I could, that's science. I'm sorry for <laughs> saying something bad. Sad. I just lost my dog, so just brought that up. All right. So, science versus non-science. So, the authors want you to understand that there's a big fine line between it sometimes. Um... We have that debate going on in the scientific community right now with something called super string theory. Okay, so it is in science as well. Is it science or not? And I'll show you a movie later on regarding that. So with that, we eventually developed something called the scientific theory, scientific method. Slide 63, we disting distinguish one from the other by first starting off with defining science. Science in the Latin is knowledge. That's what science is. So you don't gain all knowledge from science. It's just science is, that's what we're trying to do, is pure knowledge, pure logic. Okay, slide 64. With this scientific thinking, scientific theory, it's it was developed in order for all scientists to be able to use the same method no matter what scientific, scientific thought they, uh, was occurring in their mind. Use the same method. Okay, So you'll see on the slide, 64, you make an observation. Lots of observations. We've talked about all the observations from Kepler, Copernicus, Ptolemy, Brahe, etc., Galileo observation after observation after observation and then you ask a question if you were writing a research paper for this class it was in written in the APA format asking question is the the um, interest what are you interested in in all of your observations and all of your research and then from that you suggest a hypothesis which in your paper would be you develop a thesis that would be your hypothesis the sun is not the center of the universe. Mars is. You know, whatever your thesis is. Okay? It's got to be a science-based thesis. Okay? And then you make a prediction, which, which means you develop your proof. Well, I can prove that Mars is the center of the universe by just observing Mars 
as all objects orbit it. Okay, I'll have to prove that. All right, well then from there you perform test after test after test and you either are successful or not. And if you're not successful, you go back up and you you refine your prediction. Well, maybe Mars is not the center of the universe. Maybe you have to go all the way back up to the um, hypothesis if you're not doing very well at your test and change your hypothesis. But you don't change your research. You've already done enough research. You have your interests. So Mars may not be the center of the universe. Maybe it's orbiting the sun. Okay. So, slide 65. But science, it rarely precedes, proceeds in this way, in an ideal way. Not really. So we start by looking around. We make a guess. We have a hunch. That's how science starts. We have a hunch. We have an interest. We've got all these people that really have some weird interests. They're scientists. So, biologists are weirdest people on the earth, I think. God bless them, because we need them. So, in slide 66, uh, we have a hallmark of science as a result of the scientific thought process. We use modern science observing phenomena. With our eyes, we observe it. We have to collect data, and we've got to be able to see it, to believe it. So, the supernatural is removed from science. We do not form any hypotheses on the supernatural. Does that mean the supernatural does not exist? No! Science does not explain everything. Science doesn't talk about finance. Science doesn't talk about uh, repairing my car that I just had to put in the shop. No. Science is uh, just a method. Scientific th theory is just a method of developing tests, using natural phenomena, observing it, and that's it. It's simple. It's not uh, trying to push out anything except for one thing, and that's why I talked about Galileo. It is making sure that you push religion out. Religion gets in the way. God doesn't get in the way. Again, scientists never meant to push God out. Divine intervention. Divine intervention is really what they meant. Religion. Yes, they do want to push that out. But since God created science, it's hard to push God out. And they realize that. Now, there are scientists that push God out. I mean, literally, they do not believe in the existence of God because they cannot observe God, the supernatural, so they do not consider it as real. That's to their detriment, but the fact is they're looking for God. Scientists are searching for knowledge, for pure knowledge, the ultimate knowledge, and now we're working on a theory called the theory of everything. <coughs> well, hallmark of science number two in slide 67 is um, that science progresses to the creation and testing of models, trial and error, trial and error, test it again, test it again, try it again, try it again, fail, fail, fail. Scientists fail a lot, but that's called a success story. Kind of like salesmen, they get rejected a lot. They just say, oh, well, I'm closer to finding the one that says yes. <laughs> but in science, we use something called Occam's Razor. Meaning, you have all these theories out there and all these hypotheses out there. The one that is clear to where the entire scientific community can understand it, where it makes sense to the masses, to the consensus, and it makes sense when they can submit their paper and it makes sense to the societies, then that has got to be the right theory the right one to approach. So, and then slide uh, 68, the hallmark of science number three, is you've got to be able to test the prediction. You've got to be able to show results of your hypotheses. Okay. 
the Big Bang is a theory. Hard to prove, hard to test, hard to hard to prove and test and get a result because we don't observe it. We haven't observed it. So is it a theory? Is it science? We have evidence of background cosmic cosmic background radiation. Something caused it. We have evidence that we are moving away. So maybe it is true that the Big Bang existed, but we have not observed it. So there's lots of questions about that. Okay, in the scientific community. It is called a theory, however. One theory that uh, is hard to prove, hard to prove, is theory of evolution. There's another one called the theory of everything. Um, theories are theories because they can't get much farther. The supernovas, the life of a supernova is a theory because we've only witnessed supernovas. We do have observations. But we only have the one in 1400 AD, um, BC, uh, the one in 1000 AD, the Chinese witnessed, and then the uh, one in uh, 1987. That's it. So, we don't have much to go by for supernovas. There are a lot of theories out there that are fairly safe because we just don't have enough observation. They remain theories, though. So, scientific theory must, uh, in slide 69, must explain a wide variety of observations and must be supported by a large, compelling body of evidence. It must not have failed any crucial test of its validity. So Darwin's theory in slide 70, does Darwin's theory stand up to the test of scientific theory? But I'm going to tell you right now that Darwin's theory to the consensus shows that in C, the scientific community says, after more than a hundred years of putting Darwin's theory to the test, the theory stands stronger than ever having successfully met every scientific challenge to its validity. Okay, 100 years. Cool. However, I can show you lots of scientists that oppose that. And I'll give you one right off, right immediately. His name is Dr. Carl Baugh, B-A-U-G-H. Creation Science Institute. He is a, uh, not a paleontologist, but that's what he does. He looks at ancient uh, bones. He looks at bones. And maybe it is a paleontologist. But he is a uh, well-known, lives in Texas. He's still, his heart is still ticking. You can find him on the web. And if there's time, I'll show you some of his uh, work. Um, in slide 72, what have we learned is uh, science has come a long way in the way that we think. We still use the scientific method. It is a method, and it does. And we don't come up with uh, our theories and our, our hypotheses uh, all the time the same way. Sometimes we stumble into them. Um, sometimes they're just guesses, but that's okay. We're okay with failure. Okay. So a scientific theory is though it's based on some hallmarks of science, it's based on um, some general foundations which really has worked well over time. Now, that concludes chapter three. Are there any questions? No, I don't hear anybody. Can't hear you? I don't, I don't see anybody raising their hand. Okay, good, no questions. <laughs> well, I guess that's good. If you do have a question, please contact me. You know my email address, you know my phone number, you know you can text me, contact me please, um, I welcome it. Okay, that concludes week two's series of lectures. Um, I will see you in class on week three.